I like my clap was really, really, um, it's really small on the waveform. Oh, it's okay. Because <laughs> I did it way far away from the mic over here. <laughs> clap louder, Mark. I'm try. <laughs> I'm trying. Be, be the clap you want to see in the world. <laughs> A loud you're right, one. You're right. <laughs> a loud <laughs> ass singular clap. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. You, you done gulping? Actually, in honor of Samira, I'm going to be drinking super close to the microphone today. <laughs> Why? Because you can't spell Samira no. without ASMR. Oh, okay. <sighs> I like it. I don't. Don't encourage him. <laughs> <laughs> no, John. <laughs> you know, just crink- crinkle some paper or something over there. <laughs> oh, God, the gulps. Hello, lore heads, <laughs> and welcome to the League, exploring the League of Legends lore for me to see. My name is Rebecca. And I'm John. My name is Mark. Love laughing during the intro. <laughs> Today we're talking about the Desert Rose Samira, who was released September 21st, 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Recent. Yeah. Pretty recent. Mm-hmm. Um, and she plays like a recent champion. <laughs> she bullshit. <laughs> so you say. I would say she she's one of our, like... Our our big no nos in the bot lane. If we're against a Samira, we're both like, "Well, we fucking lost this." Like, I don't know Go what next. it is. There's certain champions that, like, you know, there's certain champions you can't play against, and both of us can't play against Samira. I don't know what it is, and we can't play as Samira either. It's no. just no. She's just no not, winning. Not our champion. Telling you, folks, log in, queue up as Samira when they're streaming. Stream snipe them. Get that that Elo, <laughs> that Aram Elo, that, that Aram. Aram Elo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can't do it. It's bad. <sighs> Sorry. Oh my gosh. We just started. I'm sorry. You can't already be too tired. John, as I went into our room to fix myself up to get ready for the podcast, I turned <laughs> the light on up. and you were in bed <laughs> sleeping. So <laughs> don't you fucking st- And he now I'm I, fresh. I didn't know he was in there. I literally heard him go <laughs> <laughs> because he hissed at me when I turned the light on. <laughs> and I look over and I just see this lump in the covers and his like scrunched up face peering over them. <laughs> so <he> went, <laughs> scared the shit out of me. I had no idea you were in there. <laughs> Fucking rat man. <laughs> yes. You rat person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I felt it splash on me. Yeah, you did. You splashed it all over my blankie. My bad. It's technically our daughter's gonna, blankie, but it's gonna be sticky. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, Samira. <laughs> yeah. Samira. She's yeah. got a bio and a short story. She does. She just has a bio and a short story. And technically, oh, a comic. Though it was only released in China. Oh. Though there's oh. a fan translation into English. Oh, neat. Interesting. I did not, I didn't see that. Well, you'll, I'll be excited to explore that. Not Wouldn't a lot that be to funny explore. if that was linked on the universe page? <laughs> 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 that was the one comic they decided right? to link. It, like, it links to like the Reddit post of the fan translation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Samira, I'll do her bio. I also want to say, Samira, God, Riot really outdid themselves. She is one of the <laughs> hottest champions in the fucking game. I am super into Samira. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> I don't think you'll get a lot of it, you know. yeah. Disagreements? No. Yeah. No. How could you? Yeah. Uh, Samira was a normal girl and a, ma- a makra? A makra? Maybe? A makra. Sure. Okay. I always yeah. ask, like you guys know, and I right. like lit- neither of you are looking at the word right now. I don't know why you clearly don't remember from the bio. I remember nothing I read. <laughs> yeah, right. right. I mean, why? That's why, why I always even have do twenty it? pages of notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Samira and her parents were street performers, despite her parents wanting uh, more for her. 
One day, Samira, when she was 14, Amakura was raided by strangers. A lot of people were injured and killed, though shockingly, not Samira's parents. Right? I, I thought for I, sure no, we were going to get the... Sure. <laughs> I thought we were going to get the twofer. Yeah. <laughs> a, little, a little Dick Grayson kind of set up, a little, <laughs> right, little right? flying, flying Graysons, you yeah. know. He's Robin. Oh, Circus family that died. Sorry, I don't know his <laughs> Christian name. I only know his street name. <laughs> glad, John, I'm glad you saw the question in my eyes. I didn't have to say it out loud. Um, anyway, Samira quietly hid and ended up feeling very angry at herself for being so afraid, which she'd never felt before, even when doing stunts for money. So she vowed to never be scared again. <laughs> I'm not, her <laughs> I'm not afraid anymore. You hear me? You hear that? I'm not afraid anymore. Oh, little Home Alone reference. That's great. <laughs> Samira, Samira McAllister. <laughs> so how's <laughs> your now? Little fourteen-year-old Samira Home Alone. The Raiders came in, and she just <laughs> set up traps all set over her traps house. Set up traps all over the place. That'd be great. <laughs> anyway, Samira and her parents escaped to Belzun, which is under Noxian rule. Samira went back to performing on the streets alone because her parents are both injured now. They can't do it anymore. Um, she did a... <laughs> I wrote down that she was doing Project Badass stunts, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So I just have to reference it's always sunny at least once. She's like evil Knievel now. She's like, whatever you want, give me money, I'll fucking do it. That's what it kind of sounds like. They're, the bio is really vague on what she's doing. They're just like, she's dangerous. She's flipping everywhere. And right. it's, it's just, it's really Part funny to me. Right. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Noxus really appealed to Samira, though. So she ended up joining a Noxian war band, mostly to make more money for her family. No one could really control her, though, except for a woman named Captain Indari, who ran a specialized unit for uh, the most risky of missions. <laughs> Lots of cartwheels involved. So many. So many cartwheels. <laughs> what are you going to apply if you can't a do here or there. consecutive cartwheels? <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't captain of your cheer squad. <laughs> Top of the pyramid. Anyway, Samira and Andari ended up injured on a mission on the Rokrund Plains. Samira lost an eye, but Andari ended up paralyzed. Not many people survived. They're like really small kind of group, so they ended up disbanding. Samira still wanted to work with her, though, so Indari uses her connections to find Samira dangerous mercenary work. She's pretty well known now in Runeterra, and even some of like the higher-ups in Noxus knows that she's the one to hire if they need some risky shit done. And if you're a pale lady, mysteriously with no name... <laughs> 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 you took great interest in Samira. I, I liked the explanation of her losing her eye. I feel like this happens a lot in the bio where they designed her and they're like, you know, it would be fucking cool, an eye patch. Right. And then, and then, and then the lore team's like, well, how did she lose her eye? Hang on, now we have to explain <laughs> this. <laughs> oh, man. Well, at least Kazakhs didn't pluck her eye out and then eat it in front of See, her. See, that oh. felt like it was part of the lore. Here it was like, uh, and she lost an eye. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why they Something even do happened. that. A building like, right, exploded. Can, you told us she was doing evil Knievel shit. It's like I'm amazed yeah. she has all her fingers, right? Right. Like, I, yeah, I don't know. I just assume at some point something went wrong. Yeah, I mean, they mentioned that she was injured in like that when she was 14 and like the original invasion. So, like, I mean, I probably would have if I had like, if they never explained her losing an eye, I would have assumed that she lost the eye then. But I yeah. don't know. Yeah, whatever. It's just always well, very funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is funny because it's like it's the it references, and they do it a lot now that now that you mention it. The references some battle at some place that is never ever going to no. come up again. It's just like <laughs> who gives a shit, right? Fuck it. World, though, yeah. it's going to come up in the MMO. Right. We're going to find her eye. Oh, we're, we're, <laughs> you get ten of them. Mm. It's right. It's gonna be some loot we get. It's used for a potion or something. <laughs> but first, you must get those mysterious eyes. If you want to brew the dead mm. devil potion <laughs> to get Ooh, through you, this pass. <laughs> what if you have to go around and collect all the different missing eyes, like Rango's eyes out there? <laughs> Who else is missing some? That'd be a real mm. short list of collectibles. All the two eyes that were. Well, two you know, there's, <laughs> there, I bet there's more. There's gotta be a third person missing. There's gotta be right. right. No oh, one in Buildwater has an eye patch. Come on, that's you know what we don't care about those. You're eyes, onto though. something there. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> They're shitty pirates. <laughs> they have too many eyes between them. 
<laughs> I don't trust you. Aye, aye. Okay. Hey. Oh, goodness. Uh, what do we yeah. think of Samira's bio? I think it really highlights why Noxus has such an easy time recruiting people. <laughs> like, so much shit's going on in the world. Like, everyone in Sharima... Like, everyone's village just gets destroyed whenever fucking Azir or Nasus or Pantheon <laughs> come rolling through. Like, all they just want is somewhere where they can just fucking live their life and not have a demigod just destroy their town for no reason. And there's a lot of shit going on in Noxus, but you know what there's not a lot of in Noxus? Demigods destroying your village? <laughs> I yeah. can see why they recruit people. And you know what? what you know what I can't see? How they haven't conquered Demacia yet? They probably get so many fucking recruits. Their doors are open everywhere. Demacia's got their doors closed to fucking everyone. <laughs> Demacia is probably fine with. I, well, that's a good question. I don't know. I kind of assume that Demacia. What I was going to say is, I think Demacia would probably see a lot of people coming to them for the same reason, right? It's some place of stability that's true. in the, the world of bullshit. And as long as you don't do magic, you're probably. It seems like maybe they got a place for you. I don't know. Yeah, Demacia is very large. It's kind of. The impression that I got. But yeah, I, I would say Noxus has so many more, <laughs> like, uh, uh, what do you call them? I even just use the words. like uh, Provinces or like yeah, outposts. Yeah, mm-hmm. they have, I think they have a lot more. But I don't know, yeah. I, I, I like Samira. Um, I felt like her bio was fine. It didn't really, like, super connect or click with me. It's just not, like, my kind of story, I guess. I did like the, the twist of her parents just being alive. I like that. <laughs> the big <laughs> twist. Honestly, her parents aren't right. dead. <laughs> I do like when you don't fall into that trap. I like that she she's now driven by her own cowardness. But not. it wasn't that she didn't save her parents. It was that she watched other people die. And it still affected her, as it would any human being you know you don't have to see your loved ones die to be um you know changed forever but i also like that she's very driven by money i would say samira's character she wants to make money but she wants to make money for her like disabled parents which is also like a nice kind of twist on this type of trope i guess then she should stop giving away her money every time she taunts people (laughs) (laughs) that was bread for a week samira Parents are over there like, call us a loser, Samira. <laughs> yeah, I do like I, the, I they know. have a list at the end of the bio of like daredevil-y stuff she's done. They do? And that was the least daredevil stuff, I think, ever. <laughs> They're like, now remember. she does all the most daring stuff from beating a chem baron oh, in yeah. hand-to-hand mm. combat, which like, We've seen Arcane. We've seen the Chem Barons beating one of them in hand to hand. Like, have you fucking seen Samira? Of course she's going to beat them in hand to hand combat. It didn't say she beat a Chem Thug, like a Chem Baron. Like, okay. And then it's like, <laughs> to being the lone survivor of a Bilgewater raid. It's like, you literally just said that you go on missions by yourself. Of course you're the lone survivor. You're the lone survivor, or there's no survivor. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a fair point. I just thought it was uh, some a funny list to include at the end. Like the whole story was very impressive. Like, oh, that's some cool shit she did, and then like, and she even did these things. I was like, all right, well, I don't give a shit about those things. (laughs) So did every other champion. (laughs) (laughs) Did that when she was like twelve? Are you kidding me? (laughs) (laughs) She grabbed the plate out of the microwave without even checking if it was still super fucking hot. (laughs) Wow! (laughs) She brushed her teeth and drank orange juice. (laughs) Oh no, Samira. Disgusting. <laughs> Nasty girl. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. But um yeah, I, I I like a lot of what you're saying, Rebecca. You know, I think a lot of her mo- motivations feel they're small scale and they make a lot of sense character wise, yeah. you know. Um makes a lot of sense what she's doing. I like the the bio and I like the I like Samir as a character overall. I like like the devil may cry, you know, kind of big super crazy, you know, personality stuff. Mm-hmm. I just kind of wish that um, we had a story that really sold that to me because I thought the short story was kind of like, eh, didn't really yeah. hit that height. Yeah. But the bio I like. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was interesting that her title is the Desert Rose because this story 
the amount of times that they said, she's a daredevil, she's not afraid of anything, she's courageous, she is brave in the face. Yeah. I really would have thought it'd be like the desert daredevil or like <laughs> the dare desert or like some shit like <laughs> that. The dare <laughs> desert. The dare desert. <laughs> yeah, that one's on a winter, John. You've done better. <laughs> but, <laughs> Take that to you- the bank. It reminded me that? so much. <laughs> you have to do whatever the desert dares you. It'll make you kiss your best friend. Like this bug. <laughs> Fucking dare. I love it. It reminded me of like, I don't know, that fucking Tumblr post where like someone was like, if you told me that there were two superheroes mm. and one of them was blind and used echolocation to fight and the, <laughs> and the other one loved jumping off buildings and fighting people with high tech gadgets for the thrill of it. And one of them was called Daredevil, and one of them was called Batman. <laughs> I would punch you in the face when I found out which one was which. <laughs> this is what it reminds me, because she lives in the same fucking region as Zyra. If you told me <laughs> there was a Desert Rose and Ooh. and <laughs> Daredevil yeah, champion. That's a, that's a really good point. I forgot about Zyra. I don't know what Zyra's title is. The, 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 the Thorn. The, Queen the, of Thorns. Queen of Thorns. Like we're gonna guess it. I love this. All right, the the dark thorn. I'm gonna guess like the 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 something bloom. Ooh, bloom is good. Or the deadly John. bloom or something like that. De- yeah, deadly, deadly bloom. bloom or something. I hope it's none of these. Rise of the Thorns. That's her title. That's Rise her of title. the Thorns. That that's sounds not, like that, a, that's dope though. That sounds like the next yeah. event that they're gonna Damn. disappoint us with. Yeah, I'm like that. I like that. that I wish they cool all had more, though. Yeah, I wish they all had naming schemes like that. There was a little more like emotive, like something. Mm. Like they that. put they put all of their creative energy, unfortunately, into her title. I think because I'm pretty sure her <laughs> lore is not existent. So but just damn, great at the title! Page. There's no bio. There's nothing. It's just a four oh four zero Heimerdingers. Just a big middle finger. <laughs> just her rise of the four oh four. What were we talking about? Oh, the Desert Rose uh, thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah Short desert. story time. Oh, yeah. I agree, though. Her title does not make sense at all. I don't understand it. <laughs> it makes now, I will say... In, in the oh. desert, but... In the Chinese comic, there's one line in there that ties into her name, which I feel like we're really missing in... Oh, interesting. <laughs> in all the, the North American stories. Okay, huh. I'm curious. Does she to hold leave? Any judgment. Does she leave a rose upon the corpses of her victims? She does not. Damn I'm sorry. Does she, <laughs> it's not. It's not that. It's not that on the nose. Oh. <laughs> does okay. she trick? Does she trick a veteran returning from Iraq dressed as a rose? Oh my playing God. Rose? <laughs> <laughs> Man, we're just all about oh, all about episodes. always sunny today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. You're never going to believe the name of her short story. It's the Daredevil (laughs) Impulse. Oh, yeah. Fuck. I forgot. I didn't even write it down. Fuck. I forgot about it. It's not the Desert Rose. The Rosy Impulses. The Rosy Impulses. Mm. Mm, Mmm. That's her erotica. (laughs) Shit. Uh, By Michael Luo. Um, So, Samira is... She's coming into a gun shop to get some cool ass guns and I guess the people that work there also double as tattoo artists so that's got her attention Mm -hmm. Um, and she goes there to drop fat stacks on new guns and Indari is coming along with her and kind of chiding her the whole time Uh, Samira 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 is doing some job she's coming to get some weapon back uh, and leave no survivors she kind of goes out into the jungles and Shurima so I guess maybe almost into Ishtal I don't know Uh, and comes upon I was thinking that like yeah, comes up on the aftermath of it all. Um, looks like something crazy has already gone down. There's chunks of twisted metal everywhere, um, and there are some <laughs> Noxian kind of leftovers that she just kills because I, I get no survivors, right? And I guess that means no survivor, no matter what. Uh, she kills them all, and she's kind of waiting. They, they mention Rel. I think we kind of went over this in Rel's in Rel's back. Yeah, they bit. mentioned Rel. She was there for some null child that I guess Rel has already kind of taken back, and. Um, one second. <laughs> yeah, I, I can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not showing up on, on Audacity. Um, it's okay. Okay, I think Sarah's hopping on it. Uh, okay, hold on. I just completely lo- lost my place, too. Sorry. Um, okay, so she gets back. She didn't find the weapon, um, but she is 
got her new guns and she's going to go off and go do more Samira things. And then at the end, Samira has gotten been getting her tattoos, you know, kind of freshened up and as she leaves and Dari is there, the tattoo artist turns into a pale woman and the pale woman talks about how like, oh, make sure Samira gets whatever she needs cuz uh the empire needs her. <clears throat> For some reason, yeah, for reasons, yeah, for reasons TM, TM. that we yeah. couldn't couldn't determine. Do you think mm. <laughs> that the tattoo artist was tattooing someone the whole time, but it was like LeBlanc who didn't know what the fuck she was doing, <laughs> <laughs> and like she turns into like, like she turns figure. into LeBlanc, and the dude's like, "What the fuck?" And then he looks down, and he's got like no regards on his <laughs> <laughs> a big smiley face. <laughs> I think it would be like a really bad doodle of Mordekaiser, like the Jace post, like the Jace picture right? in arcane. In arcane. <laughs> but it's Mord. Uh. Yeah, I like that because I think well, Samira was the one getting the tattooing done, and I do like the idea that she's like, "Oh, I don't want any big pieces. Not, you know, I'm just getting it kind of freshened up." And LeBlanc's just sweating bullets. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh fuck! I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I need Bowser on a surfboard with a double naked. <laughs> <laughs> okay well that was a whitest kid you know reference i'm pretty sure <laughs> great great sketch um, but yeah uh, this one's okay it, it didn't like some has got like a big personality it makes me think a bit of like brahm where I, I like like everything about brahm like in game and the lore setup and then the short stories didn't like really punch for me yeah mm-hmm. um there is a moment I like where they're so she's fighting these guards and at some point they kind of come up on basilisks and she's gonna do some cool flip maneuver or whatever on the basilisk and she waits a moment to make sure it's like this is when it's gonna be the most thrilling is when I do it right here at the very last moment which I like I like that little moment you know yeah Yeah. she's funny she's very intentionally showy like (laughs) like the way that kind of (laughs) thinking about like marvel movies the way people land and stuff it just seems like oh that's just what they do but samira would be like all intentional oh yeah like oh i'm gonna land exactly like this because i'm gonna look cool as hell (laughs) yeah she's got that internal monologue i think there's like one little paragraph section where she like has four or five like little lines to herself like oh this now is gonna get fun it's it's kind of funny (laughs) a little running internal it's like exactly the type of dialogue that you would get when playing like, you know, like a Devil May Cry type game when their style meters going up. Oh. Yeah. I never yeah, played that's what one made of, think of. <laughs> yeah. Uh that so I have a quote from that section in particular. It said she reared back her arms and chucked her guns at the basilisk's eyes, dazing the beast for a moment. Turning her back, she leapt into the air, flipping her body in a perfect backward circle before landing on the creature's saddle. Pulling the reins taut, she jerked her mount to face the remaining soldier. And then, uh, you know, they kind of had a back and forth. And then the soldier said, enraged, the soldier forced his mount forward. But like, (laughs) my dude, why did you not? Did you not just see all that <laughs> shit she just did? Like, Noxus, man. Yeah. They're, uh, like, they're cut stubborn. your losses, my dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they don't wear armor on their backs because they don't retreat, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, uh, so that is a cool moment in this one when that guy charges her. <clears throat> and she hits him with her sword and kind of catches in his armor. And then she kind of has like a gun blade situation going on. Yeah, but it just does. kicks the, gun, the, the sword forward and pushes through the armor. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Nah, that was pretty I like that. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I like the implication that she only uses guns once when she buys them. Because she's <laughs> after she's done with this fight, she's like, I think I'm going to keep them for a while. And Indari's like, oh, you're actually going to use guns more than once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious about them, too, because they very specifically mention that they're from Zon and that the technology is not, like, super known. They're just, like, being sold. So I'm wondering if that is anything or if it's just like a little tidbit like oh "Oh, we'll put some backstory on this or maybe it it actually means anything because i remember back when we did realm we were like samira like it seems like she fights with a lot of iron and metal and shit (laughs) yeah maybe maybe that's kind of like trying to let the the set the groundwork for maybe yeah maybe it's a weapon that was built by renata and it's got that 
that mm. kill switch installed where Maybe. she flips mm. the switch and all of a sudden the people attack each other and mm. LeBlanc knows it and knows that if if she's near Mordekaiser and then that flips then Mordekaiser just I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> I like it, John. I lost, <laughs> I lost the thread. It started off LeBlanc, strong, though. LeBlanc is Renata. Hang on. <laughs> uh, so we find uh, Indari's here, and it says that she's adjusting the hand rims of her wooden wheelchair. Like, it was pretty explicitly said that, like, she was the leader of a war band, like, a pretty renowned war band, and Noxus was, like, a war hero, and, like, Noxus can't spring for a fucking metal wheelchair for her? Like, what the fuck? Well, I mean, you know, that's a good question about Noxus, is, like, what's the healthcare situation like? You know, what's the veteran care situation like? I don't know, man. The swanicare? <laughs> Swainicare is what I meant. <laughs> Not a swan. <laughs> All this for all the swans to get injured in Noxus. They're constantly getting stepped on. Just <laughs> so I don't know. Also, it- she calls Samira Sam, which seems like such a oh, normie yeah. nickname. It does. Sammy. Something as cool as Samira. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sammy. <laughs> 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 Uh, we have no personalities of our own. We just reference things that we like. Well, we are millennials. Yeah. I think, you know what? Samira is so strongly, like, in reference to, like, That's Devil true. May Cry and stuff like that. But I think it's appropriate for, yeah. for this one. She's very. Yeah, this is thematic. Yes. Sh- to reference That's why. Supernatural. This is all and it's always sunny and filled yeah. yeah. Okay. That's why we don't make any references in any other episode. Because exactly. otherwise, it's true. Just, just, just show us as, as being hollow shells of people. <laughs> And old as shit. <laughs> also, she had a line for the record when she did that whole like stabbing and then shooting thing. <laughs> the because she stabbed the armor and the 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 soldier was like, "That won't work on this armor." And then <laughs> yeah. she said, "Darling, I don't work. I slay." <laughs> <laughs> That one was a little much for me. It was a little much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't decide if it's enough. If it's enough much. Like, enough you know much. I mean? <laughs> like it's a little much, but maybe that's maybe that kind of works for. I don't know. <clears throat> I think if if darling was something she said more, it, it mm. would. I think maybe it would. It wouldn't feel as out of place. But like that's fair. I, I didn't see darling in any of her quotes. Slay it's also darling. just feels like such a slang term right now. It really, yeah. <laughs> like a modern one. I know right. that it has a real definition. I understand that. But that's not, but yeah. That's not what we're using it as. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think you're right. It's, it's kind of like Beck saying normies. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. <sighs> well. Now let's get to this comic, John. Tell us about yeah, it. Okay, yeah, now I'm, I'm now basically, the comic was just an illustration of her bio. Oh. Like, it, it oh, goes kind of beat for beat. Um, but one thing that it said, one of the last panels was, a thorned rose does not fear danger, for she is the danger herself. All right, this is like a bit of a stretch. <laughs> Ford roses are not that dangerous. I picked them up before. But you see there. It's like a little minor. You fucking daredevil. Prick. But they give, they give you an ouchie. They do give you an ouchie. Oh, poo poo. poo poo. Which I guess in Runeterra, that might just cause you to die. I don't know. Yeah, apparently, because have... the healthcare sucks and knocks it. when you're on Swainicare. Yeah. Yeah. Swain maybe when you are on Swainicare. I don't know. <laughs> that Neosporin is really expensive. <laughs> on a Swainicare. Yeah. You have to kick some guy's ass. To get a fucking Benadryl. You gotta fight Darius. <laughs> in order to get your medicine. You want this Tylenol, son? Oh my god. Oh, shit. <laughs> Harmacy. That's what we're looking for, by the way. Hey. Interesting. Uh, How do you, oh, can I ask about the comic? Is it like worth yeah. looking at? Is the art good? What do you think of it? Even like um, it's kind of like a. I think it's like eight to ten panels. Um, it's pretty cool. Oh, it's pretty like, short. I, I liked it. Yeah, it, it kind of reminded me of like you know how sometimes you'll see a short story that has random pictures kind of interspersed throughout mm. the universe. It kind of reminded me of that. Oh, okay, that's solid. Can I ask real quick too? Um, so in the bio, I think it's specifically Zareth or Zareth's followers who attacked, right? Not just. 
Oh, some randos, right? Oh, I didn't yes. see in the bio if they had specified. But they I said like a powerful magus. Oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah. When they, whenever they try to like, unless they say something like oh, the pale woman, <laughs> I know who that is. But otherwise, I get a little lost when they're trying to be subtle. Just say it was Zareth. I don't need... Just We now, know his name. I don't understand. To be fair, in the Chinese comic, there is a bit of a discrepancy there. because and, and not sure if this is a translation thing or not, but in the comic, it said it was cultists of the Void Prophet, not a Magus. Oh. Interesting. Maybe, one's maybe, purple maybe. and one's blue. So right, which, which... what color were the lightning bolts as they came down? <laughs> I was curious. <laughs> I'd like to see that police composite sketch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna slap fight with Cassidy in out in the alleyway. <laughs> it was both of them. Just. Man. Yeah. Maybe Magus just has no good translation, and that's why. Right. I don't know. Mm. Oh God. Careful. My bad. Uh, so she's also in a cinematic. Yeah, she is. The Ruination. You know, when we thought The Ruination was going to be good. Yeah. This good cinematic, cinematic, (laughs) the one good thing in The Ruination. Yeah. So this was the whole where, you know, she's in Noxus when Viego's mist shit goes everywhere using some weird magic that's never seen again during the whole Ruination event, Mm. for the record. (laughs) Um, uh, She's going to be misted, but Darius knocks her out of the way and he gets ruined instead. So then she and Darius fight, but in the end, they're both fine. And this was truly the highlight of the Sentinels of Light. Yeah. Yeah. It was neat seeing, getting to see her fight. That was fun. Mm. Yeah. Did her little she's... bendy moves and flippy bits. <laughs> she did her flippy bits. It's did true. her cartwheels. Yeah. <laughs> she did that kind of half-assed kid cartwheel where, like, the legs don't go up. They kind of go out. Like, you just kind of like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That, any the, cartwheel uh... I've ever done in my life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a cartwheel. <laughs> Forget the name of it. Uh, oh, butterfly or some shit it? like that. There's oh, a name was, for it. The one that Darth Maul car. does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Darth Maul does a car wheel? He does it a lot cooler. He does it without putting his hands on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Which is well, a little more impressive. Really. <laughs> that's some yeah. mirror shit right there. Yeah, it's a real it's a real kind of wasted... It's a shame, right? Everything, as always, with Rise of the Sentinels is a real shame because she's uh, she probably would have been real cool. I think she would be kind of fun to put her put her in the same space as Draven because they're mm. I think those two personalities kind of have some similarities and some differences yeah so really her and big Ruin, personalities though yeah, yeah mm-hmm. exactly she doesn't like Draven that much I feel like Makes she sense. would yeah. but that would be fun clashing personalities yeah yeah um maybe it's in not, so, not room for two daredevils mm-hmm. <laughs> but they're but don't now worry kind of she's a desert them. rose <laughs> The hate to love. <laughs> it's not normally my thing, but I feel like it would be more fun in this instance. Draven's got another one of those, right? That War Mason he from does. way back when. I, he, I did like he's her. Built for it. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. triangle. Oh, Ooh. Well, they want they from. Mm, I'm liking it. And they just all fall in love with each other. There we go. That's probably how it would end up. Is that Draven? Is that those two, the War Mason and Samira, would end up together, and Draven would be fine. Oh, Draven's just he, alone. he doesn't need anybody. He yeah. just needs himself. Right, he's got a little pocket mirror. It's like, yeah. He thinks that. He would be sad. (laughs) This fan fiction writes itself. (laughs) Oh, man. Well, I think that's Canon Samir. Oh, you have some quotes here. I got some quotes. Uh, So she has a quote. uh, Oh, did I step on your moment? Which uh, refers to a line said by Black Widow in Captain America the Winter Soldier. Oh. Quite literally, I'm sorry, did I step on your moment? Huh. Hmm. That's very specific. Hmm. Uh, you're dead weight. It's probably a Devil May Cry 5 reference. <laughs> Nero, go. You're just dead weight. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll accept uh, it. And then Jackpot, <laughs> also a Devil May Cry reference, term used for the various times by the protagonist of the Devil May Cry series. He says it a lot, Dante. Oh. Uh, yeah. It's also present in the stylish rank in some games of the series. It's one of the ranks you can hit. Good yeah. Shit. Neat. One of many Devil May Cry references, and we're going to do even more of the fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I sounded much cooler than that. I was going to say, don't tell her the fun hun. facts now. Make her leave the room. Only you and I will know <laughs> yeah. the fun facts. Yeah. I respect there, them. There are fun facts. They're fun and they're facts. Okay. Right, well, I got some I use for you first. I really okay. Much. First up, we got PsyOps. A psychic paramilitary unit of fearsome power, the Black Rose Group, hopes to create a new global order with their ferocious human bioweapons. This one is PsyOps Samir, and they're kind of like an offshoot of the larger PsyOps group. There's like the good PsyOps group, and then the Black Rose group is kind of the, the counter-ops. Okay. Uh, this is PsyOps Samira. Fearless and deadly, Samira was once a renowned soldier of fortune. A born thrill-seeker, she fights not for fame or wealth, but to push the limits of her skill. Through intense training, her innate psychic powers have been fully unleashed, allowing her to turn every mission and every kill into a thrilling display of stylish flair. And this one has a cinematic called Operation Songbird. This is that one where the PsyOps units kind of rescue Sona. And while Samira herself isn't in it, her title is at the end scene where the the group where they rescued Sona from is kind of calling in the the Black Rose group to, to deal with it. And you can see the Desert Rose and the Ripper and uh, the two other people, I forget. <laughs> Some others, et cetera. Some other asshole. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I forgot about the Black Rose. Maybe this is why she's the Desert Rose. Maybe she's in in the organization she doesn't even know she it. just doesn't know it she has no right. idea <laughs> yeah most people who think they're in it aren't actually in it and she's actually in it and doesn't mm. know it <laughs> i mean maybe indari is and that's... i mean you know it's like you gotta be it's like being cool right you can't want it too much you know if you want to mm. if you want to be cool you're not gonna be that's she true yeah. what do you think cassiopeia thinks about this She's actually in the Black Rose and also in the desert. It's like, I don't think that she son of a bitch. <laughs> this is some bullshit. Well, you're a snake. I'm sorry, but you could be, you could be the desert snake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more it's than just like, a it's snake. It's not good. Uh, <laughs> I don't like it. No. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, next up, we got Space Groove. Mm hmm. In a groovy galaxy a million disco infernos away, a mysterious energy known only as the Groove brings music and prosperity to trillions of galactic citizens. But when the alien overlord Lysandra and her army of harsh vibes begin to enslave planets and suppress disco music, a new age of heroes arises to stop her and keep the party groovin'. This one's Space Groove Samira. A groovy, thrill-seeking bodyguard, an elite warrior from the Hot Tub Nebula, Samira took a job directly from the three-party goddesses to save Lux from an impending invasion of the normal world. Now, as the pair liberate planets across the galaxy, Samira must do everything in her power to keep Lux safe, both from Lysandra, Lysandra and from Lux's own lack of self-preservation instincts. Lasonda. Lasonda. So hold on, I don't remember. Did, did Lux? I don't remember this. This from Lux. This this pairing of her and Samira from back on the Lux episode. Oh, we new? didn't have Space Groove Lux out when I think we did the Lux episode. Yeah, but you're right. Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure. Okay. Damn, I like that though. Yeah. I like that kind of setup though. Yeah, and she's in the cinematic too. That dancing cinematic. <laughs> oh, she I know really? it can kind of be hard to determine who people are in that cinematic because it's very stylized um she's the one with the eye patch <laughs> with those pellets, yeah. I, I so. forgot you're welcome <laughs> but yeah i'm liking all uh, that also, three party goddesses oh yeah the three party goddesses and the the norms yeah dope fun fact. uh fun fact about this one uh samira's boogies because everyone in this uh in this universe has like little creatures that go around them called boogies her boogies are named frank and twofers it's adorable frank and twofers okay. frank and twofers frank and twofers <laughs> i'm sure that's got to be like a br- sure. like something right. an inside joke with them right yeah someone those are their cat names or something <laughs> probably because i feel like her actual uh oh yeah the 
well, I guess we'll get into it in the fun facts. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it. Yeah, don't ruin it. I have to leave the room for those. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and then finally, we got High Noon Gothic. Yeah, we do. Gunslingers and lawmen ride beneath the merciless sun of the high frontier, chasing survival and salvation in equal measure. Heaven is rubble, hell is empty, and all the devils are here. Shit, okay. Calm down. This one's High Noon Samira. <laughs> the poster was straightforward enough. Wanted, Tom Kench, devil, dead or alive, mm. followed by a generous sum. Only the mechanical devils got that kind of cash to pay. Samira ain't sure why the other bounty hunters seem so spooked by a little old devil hunt. Well, let him shy away. This gunpowder witch don't scare easy. So she, she's, um, she has thorns. I knew like so rose. fucking cool. I knew it is so cool. A gunpowder gun witch? witch? God, that, mm. <laughs> that is so fucked. Damn, I fucking love High Noon, man. I want, <laughs> I want this fucking anime. Season three of Arcane? I know, come on. on. High Noon. It's not going to happen. God it's never going to happen. Uh, <laughs> All right. Fun fact time, okay, baby. Bye. I got 16 of them. Holy oh, shit. shit. <laughs> Samira <laughs> is voiced by Emily O'Brien, who also voices Camille. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, Samir's gameplay hook was to create a marksman that goes in and out of melee range, which they did. They gone done did it. Yeah, they fucking did. Uh, <laughs> and we we referenced this, but unlike conventional emotes, Samir's taunt has mechanical functions. It creates a coin skill shot that if Samira has one gold to spare, it deals one damage and gives one gold to an enemy champion. And it also automatically aims towards dead enemy champions in range. <laughs> I didn't know about any of that interaction. I knew she flipped the coin, oh, no. but I didn't realize, yeah. no. Yeah. Oh. I, yeah. I remember there was a video of someone on YouTube desperately trying to get a kill. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, the one damage. With I don't know coin. if they ever did. I think they did, but they really needed the enemy team to give it to them. Mm. <laughs> They were trying to, like, do everything they could to make the one coin do extra damage through, like, runes and items. <laughs> uh, and Samir's taunt dealing damage was inspired by one of Luigi's taunts in Super Smash Brothers. Oh, hmm. interesting. He's got yeah. the one taunt where he nervously shuffles and stamps his foot, and it deals one damage. But if you're hanging onto the ledge... It's also one of the strongest spikes in the game. It just stomps on those fingy tips and rockets you down. <laughs> <laughs> Dope. Uh, so this is the one I was alluding to. Samira's mm. gunsmiths, uh, Lonnie and Miel, were inspired by Samira's narrative editor and writer. Ellen Kalani Stimel and Michael uh, Skip Tommy Luo. Luo. Mm. Well, I think they're ruined tarot cards now, so I wonder how they feel about that. Mm. Mm. They hate it. They hate it. Oh. Fucking hate it. Remove them from the they game. Only wanted to be in this one short story. <laughs> <laughs> they can't handle the fame yeah. <laughs> because of being a Rintera card. We're flying too close to the sun. <laughs> I can't even go on public anymore. No one recognizes me. <laughs> you that tattoo smith oh who's also God. LeBlanc? <laughs> Pale woman, John. Uh, sorry. Say your name. Sorry. Uh, now, I don't normally have working titles here, because normally the working title of a champion is something dumb, like, you know, uh, you know, Lucian would be like, Double Gun Boy, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but Samira's codename in development was Queen. <laughs> 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 they knew the vibe they wanted right away. <laughs> Uh, the narrative goal for Samira was to tell an immigrant story in Runeterra through the eyes of someone who adopted the nation as their own. Hmm. And a few iterations of Samira's kit. So one included various ways to, um, uh, like, the your style meter would go up when you did various stylish things. So, like, mm. not just by casting abilities, but by doing things like dodging skill shots or perfectly timing your spells oh. or things like mm. that. That seems like it'd get complicated real quick. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Uh, one scrap spell uh, during development was a cash-out ability that did 10% maximum health as true damage for each style grade she had up to 70% maximum health because it also used to have seven tiers instead of six. What? I 
think I, I hope I think someone I think someone got out like got out and like got went a little nuts in the design room <laughs> locked themselves in they had to be forcibly restrained it's a great idea everybody <laughs> put them she's back, my back queen in the <laughs> uh, uh, so daredevil impulses combo system style and its design we mentioned resemble devil may cry stylish rank the names of her guns, Blaze and Thorn Blaze, or uh, sorry, just Blaze and Thorn, are likely a reference to Dante's Ebony and Ivory, and her ultimate Inferno Trigger is uh, named as a reference to the Devil Trigger transformation from Devil May Cry. So, damn, yeah, yeah, pretty clear, pretty clear stuff. But I like the, I like that idea a lot. It's a really inspired yeah. notion. Yeah, it's very it's very unique in the world of League of Legends champions for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Excuse me. Uh, Samir is thirty two years old, as of nine hundred ninety six a n. I don't know what a n stands for. After after Necrit. After Nash <laughs> <laughs> Af- mm, Afternoon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> adorable. <laughs> uh, and her favorite fruit. Is pomegranate. Oh, oh okay. Mm, okay. Yeah, mixing things up here. Mm. It's uh, the sexiest fruit. Is it? Makes sense. I don't know. Doesn't it have like weird <laughs> seeds in it? Durian yeah, is the sexiest it's fruit. <laughs> I just know in Stardew Valley, <laughs> I romance Elliot, <laughs> who loves pomegranates. Well, I romance Elliot. He would. <laughs> Uh, this is an interesting thing I didn't know. The blocking animation of Blade Whirl has Samira explicitly shoot every single incoming projectile that it blocks. That's pretty cool. Right? I'll have to look for that next time. I know. I want to look for it. I, think I don't want to play against her, but... No. <laughs> every time I've played her, I've never stopped the projectile with it, so I've never <laughs> seen it, actually. <laughs> next time I play Lucian into Samira. I'm going to alt the Ooh. Samira just to see her do that, just to see her fucking shoot everything. Oh, that's that's fun. Be that would awesome. be pretty cool. I like that. Uh, Samira was teased in-game with the style rank S loot item, which was earnable that. in one patch, and it was awarded by scoring a takedown after fighting in a manner similar to Daredevil Impulse. I remember, we were playing a lot of League at the time, because uh, it was at the beginning of quarantine, and I just, I was so confused. Right. <laughs> by that S. It's like, what the fuck is it? Why is this huh. S everywhere? Huh. Weird. It's not as scary as the uh, Vola Bear teaser Holy in ARAM, though. Shit. I don't know that if anyone the played ARAM. That. that scared the shit out of me. I, had, I thought my game got happening. haunted. <laughs> like, it was wild. You were in a creepy pasta. Exactly. God, it, I, honestly, honestly, Mark, it felt like it for was a like brief it second. was like midnight. We were playing League, <laughs> yeah. and like everything darkened in the screen. Like, what the yeah. fuck is going on here? And then everyone in the entire stage gets knocked up in the air, including the minions. We're like, "Are you fucking? What is this?" It's wild. <laughs> it was the coolest champion cool reveal they've ever yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, I wish they would do more crazy shit like that. To be honest with you, me too. It's been in a ram. Like we play a lot of a rams. They're just for fun. Like throw some shit yeah. like that in there. Okay, yeah. Yeah. that's fun as all. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, if players look at the Daredevil Impulse stacks in the slot, they die. It'll. I mean, they do kind of. They're not paying attention <laughs> to what's going on. But the tooltip just says, "Why are you looking? Go style on your enemies." Interesting. Hmm. Fun. Another helpful tooltip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Riot. Right. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me how to play the game. I suck. <laughs> Go style. If you just Easy turn peasy. all chat back on, everyone <laughs> no, will be happy to. Absolutely yeah, yeah, not. Yeah. Never. Sometimes I do wonder, like. Will they Is sing anybody saying anything nice? <laughs> <laughs> they're not. No. Fuck no. <laughs> no, they're not being nice. No. They might be. We've had nice interactions before. Yeah, back mm. in the day. We were so young. Once or twice. Mm. I've had a nice interaction with someone in all chat. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's Samira. Samira. Yeah. Yeah. I'd read another it? story about Samira. I like... I yeah. feel like she lends herself to some cool action pieces. Um, and, I mean, yeah, like, I like her personality. It's fun. I just, you know, let's get some more. Yeah. 
yeah, pretty much. I mean, she's everything is so open ended. That's kind of what I liked about her bio. Way back to it, is that it is pretty open ended. She's got a really clear like. You can ex- you can kind of get an idea of what the character is interested in doing. So even though she doesn't have like a, a plot at the moment, it seems really easy to develop one for her. Really, like I guess she's kind of going to fight find Rel, but even that's kind of flimsy. <laughs> I don't know. Thin. Yeah. So. And even if you want to ignore that entirely, she could have a, a very similar thing to kind of like the Poppy uh, Monster of the Week style format where like she's just getting sent out on these crazy missions. Like I'd, I'd read those. They're fun. Yeah. With her, with her handler and, and Dari. Yeah, for sure. Mm, yeah. I like that. Well, yeah. That's uh, Samira. That's Samira. Thank you so much for listening. We have a Twitter. Is at Loreheads. We also have a Twitch, mm-hmm. twitch.tv slash Loreheads. John streams on Saturday. He starts with TFT, and then we usually jump into ARAMs if you ever want to join us. And if you're listening to this on release Monday, then you are very close to the Mage Seeker being released, and I will be streaming oh, that on right. release. John's going to be oh, streaming nice. Mage Seeker. Um, we're also, nice. he's on vacation that week, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think we're quarantining that week. So we're going to be inside a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so John's probably going to be streaming that randomly. Um, yeah, I had thought exciting. about it too, but I don't know. I don't think I'm going to. Um, anyway, oh, what else we have? We have a YouTube. We post uh, videos there and, and clips and whatnot, and John will uh, post random uh, TFT games and stuff. He's been uploading those. We have a Discord if you want to jump into some lore conversations or other random things. The link is in the description of this episode. And we have a Patreon. Thank you so much to all of our patrons. Mm, but a very special thank you to our Madarda tier patrons. Big Man Gnomes, Chloe Things, I Love Mark, King of Hearts, Shupa Moustache, and Techno Robert. If you were all being uh, hunted by a Samira. I also wouldn't give up if I saw my one partner get murdered mercilessly uh, in a blink uh, of an eye in front of me. I'd fight to the Rebecca. very end for you. Yeah, that was me. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Join us next week, I guess. <laughs> it's hypothetical. It's hypothetical. Uh-huh. <laughs> we were in the desert. Now we're going to the Freljord, baby. <laughs> For a lot more lore, as we're going to talk about the Winter's Wrath, Sejuani. Mm. 